Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to my shop. Uh, so this is just going to be a short video today. Uh, coming back to the mini mill here, the, uh, the one that I built, uh, I had a bunch of questions on my pages about this mill, about the table, uh, and some comments. I wanted to follow up on uh, these this whole series on this still to this day is one of my most popular uh, so one of the things I wanted to mention is since the last video I did on the build of this there was one more modification I didn't uh, mention and it has to do with extending the travel of the table here and we're going to measure the amount of travel I have on this in both X and Y and I'm going to look up the original specs. I'll insert that after. We'll compare the difference. Uh, I know I've added quite a bit on the, uh, the Y axis. It's, I think it's about 23 millimeters more that I've added to it. And the Y, I forget, but I think it's around two inches. We'll find out here. Uh, so I mentioned in a previous video about the x-axis, I moved the, uh, the block to the lead screw uh, from roughly the center here over to this side. Uh, and I also on the, let's see, the, uh, be the Y carriage, uh, I ground out to make clearance under here. And you can go back to that video, I believe it's episode two, where I detail that to some extent. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll actually take this apart and show inside there. I've been hesitant to do it because I have to take off my scales, my, uh, my DRO scales to actually take, get into there. Uh, but I can show you what I did on the y-axis, which what, I didn't go into any description of that before because it happened after that last video. So let me wind this back and I'm going to get you a close-up in here. So on the original build, you have your lead screw here and there's a cover for the bearing for the, uh, for the lead screw. And that originally was this piece right here which sat up there like that it wasn't very effective for one thing all it is is just a tin plate uh, and it just keeps the trips from falling directly into the bearing but it's open on the end uh, but the big problem here is it sticks way out and the block for the Y carriage ends up hitting this it's the first thing that hits so I designed this uh, out of in uh, FreeCAD, it's just 3D printed, and as you can see, we've gained a lot of room from here all the way back to here, and that nut does come all the way back and touch right back here. Can't go any further because the bearing is under there. But it isn't just a cutout, and I'm going to show you the other side here. I'm going to use my phone camera for this just so I can get in there. Okay, so here's the other side, and you can see it's got a cover that comes down over the bearing, and probably can't get enough light, but it goes right around the sides of it, too. So it's got a good bit of protection compared to the old one just being open in there. So if anyone has one of these tables or is planning on getting one, uh, this mod is real simple, gives you the extra range. Uh, I've made the files for this available on uh, Thingiverse. Uh, it's free to download. Uh, I'll put a link in uh, the description down below for this video. And it's also on my homepage for YouTube. I've got a, a link to my Thingiverse. So this is up there. There's, uh, I've got about 20 items up there at the moment that I've designed and likely be more in the future. It's all, you know, anyone that wants to use it, uh, free to download. You just need a 3D printer or have a friend that has one. So anyway, that's there. The other thing that I wanted to mention on this table, uh, I bought this one from India, uh, which I mentioned in the previous video. 
but I recently I got a comment from one of my viewers that said that uh, he bought a similar table. It was made in China, uh, and the quality on his he had some issues with it, or one issue that he mentioned. Uh, he said he had trouble with the gids not being right on it. Uh, mine was very good. I had no complaints about the, uh, the the build quality of it. As I've stated before, I mean, there's some mods that can be done to it to improve it. Uh, but manufacturing-wise, it seemed pretty decent. Everything moved good. Uh, but this was an Indian one. Now, I know a lot of Chinese factories, they copy or they may even buy rights. I don't think they usually buy rights. I think they just copy. Uh, not, not to put them down, but uh, it's, it's just a fact of life. They copy a lot of stuff. So I don't know if China has taken up copying this or what the deal is, uh, but apparently there are Chinese ones that may be the ones that are on eBay right now. So just something to be aware of because I presented this as being pretty good. I feel the one I got was really good. There may be some that have some quality issues out there. I don't want to mislead anyone. And even with this one here, I mean, it's keeping it in perspective here. I mean, you're not buying for, you know, a couple hundred bucks to, you know, a thousand bucks for a Bridgeport table here. This is a hundred and fifty dollar table. But that being said, I can easily hit .01 millimeter with this and uh, be, be confident that it's going to stay where I put it. It's not like it's jerky in its movement or anything. The gids tighten up to the point where I feel it's stable, you know, when I move it around. For the price, it, I think it's, it's a good deal. Also, that being said, the kind of position that you get with this is still way over what your drill press is going to be capable of. So on any drill press setup, you've got the tube back here, and there is some flex in here. It may not seem like it during normal drilling operations, but for a mill, you're putting lateral force this way, and forward and back on the quill. The forward and back isn't too much of an issue, but the, the side to side along the x-axis, what it will do is it wants to twist the head part this way as you push on the work. Uh, so this may twist it a little bit uh, during a heavy cutting operation. Uh, for light work, it's usually not an issue, but as you start to get into bigger cutters, you will notice it. Uh, and it, it's the, the limiting factor of doing a drill press setup like this. Uh, I mean, I could go up to about a one inch diameter on this. I have to take it easy on something that big. I can't push it. And I do notice the flexing. You start to see quality issues uh, in the cut, it, the bigger you get. Uh, but it works. But just things to think about, the limiting factors of it. That, that movement in there is going to be more of an issue than the accuracy of the table. Okay, so I just zeroed out my DRO. Uh, so let's see if we can get X uh, right on one millimeter here. This is in millimeter. So, hit that right on the dot, let's go to Y, so I mean the movement is smooth enough that I, I can hit like that. Well, the last digit just reads zero and five. Uh, so we've got uh, tenths, hundredths. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond uh, a hundredth of a millimeter that I'm able to hit with this. That's, it's as high as I can do with the DRO, basically. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can get these measurements here. 
Move this all the way to the back. And I've got a dot on here that marks where I run out a lead screw. When the edge of the table comes up to this dot right here. I, there's a close up of it in one of my previous videos. I forget which one it is. Okay, so that's the end of the travel. And uh, let's just quickly zero everything. And let's see what we have. Okay, so that's Y axis all the way to the front. We have 132, a little over, we'll call it 132. out there so 272 in the x-axis uh, we can convert that to inches as well there we go okay so there we are in inches for those of you who prefer the uh, fractional measurements and uh, I'm gonna look up the specs I'll put that in right after this so I was about 10 millimeters off on my y-axis gain. Uh, so these are the original specs. Uh, X-axis, 210 millimeters or 8.3 inches. And on the y-axis, 110 millimeters or 4.3 millimeters. And I think that's rounded on their part because it doesn't add up just quite right when I do the math at the end. Uh, so going over the gains here, uh, I've got on the x-axis 272 minus 210, we end up with 62 millimeters. In inches, that would be uh, 10.72 inches minus 8.3 inches for a total gain of 2.42 inches. On the y-axis, 132 millimeter minus 110 millimeter for a gain of 22 millimeter. In inches, 5.2 inches minus 4.3 inches for a total gain of 0.9 inches. I have one more thing I forgot to add. Uh, so coming up in somewhere in the near future, I hope, uh, I'm going to have another video coming up where I use uh, the mini mill. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, uh, my Cincinnati is down for repairs. I've been working on that. And one of the things that I'm working on is I need to make new T-bolts. Uh, these go to the head on the, uh, the overarm. And uh, I'm going to show what that is here. So these are a start here, and what I did is I just took larger bolts and uh, I've turned them down and threaded them. So this is partially done, it still has the original head size there. And this was the first one I did, I threaded all the way on this, I, the future ones I'm do, doing a partial thread uh, like that. But as you can see here, I've squared off the head to match that and the thickness. Uh, so obviously this is all lathe work here, uh, but this squaring here is mill work and I've done that on the mini mill. Uh, and I've got a whole bunch more blanks over here like that. I still need to thread these and uh, do the rest of the turning and then I'll be doing the squaring off on those. Uh, so that video is in progress now uh, along with the rest of the repairs on the Cincinnati mill. 
Uh, so this will be coming up in the, somewhere in the future here. I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. So the T-bolts, they, uh, they slide in this groove here. Just like that. And uh, they bolt the head on with this flange that's on the uh, on the head and uh, this nose here goes in the bore here keeps any lateral movement from coming into play and this holds everything tight against the face and also prevents rotation of the head this way uh, the same goes for uh, the knuckle here so a actually the head goes on the knuckle uh, on this face so this would be here like that then you would have this part and this face here is the one that goes up on the end of the overarm anyways thanks for watching if you've made it this far, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and found it entertaining or educational. If so, please consider hitting like or subscribe. It does help give me incentive to continue producing more. Thank you.